Hello. Uh, today I thought we'd talk about the the zygos vein or the zygos system of veins. Ve ve mm. Okay, so the zygos system is essentially draining the posterior thoracic wall and abdominal wall. You'll see it all links up. It's got a bit of a clever trick, but that's what we're going to look at and it's going to largely be a, a visual thing as much as a descriptive thing. All right? A zygos. You see, one of the things about the zygos vein is there's only one of them. All right? You know, you know, there's normally only like one of a vein. Well, that's not true because sometimes they're paired as they run with arteries. Anyway, gone too far. Um, you usually have a right vein and a left vein for most things, right? Well, the zygos vein, you only have one over here on the right side. You don't have one over on the left. You do have some hemiozygos veins and other bits and bobs that drain into it, which we'll look at. But that's the point, is it's, it's not paired, which gives us a bit of fun language stuff. Uh, a zygos comes from ancient Greek, uh, zyg, zig, a zig, a zig, a zig, zig means paired, zyg means paired, who knows how you pronounce it. A is like not, so a zyg us is like a not paired vein, I know, it's a brilliant name. <laughs> so the zygous vein is not paired, there's not a left one and a right one, there's just one on the right side. And we see this a little bit, don't we, with the circulatory system. We see just the aorta to the left a little bit, there aren't two aorta, not in the adult anyway. Um, there's an inferior vena cava and a superior vena cava on the right side, there's not a paired thing on the other side, and we see the brachiocephalic trunk and things like that. So this does happen. We start off lovely and symmetrical and even, and we lose some of that sym symmetry as we move from the embryonic to the fetal stages, right? So, as I guess, what am I prattling on about? Well, good Lord, it's a good job, I, I think I'm entertaining. Okay, sternum, ribs, take those away, right lung, Take out the right lung, spinny around, heart, diaphragm. See this vein here? This is the azygos vein here. And you can see straight away how it's receiving lots of tributaries, so lots of other veins are draining to it. And these are posterior intercostal veins, and we'll come to that in a moment. The questions of where does it come from? Where does it go? You can see where it goes here. And this, this is a really cool bit of anatomy. Look how it loops here. This is the hilum to the lung. Here's the heart. So the lung goes in, in here. So we have the airways running to the lung, the blood vessels running to and from the lung. That's the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. And look, the azygos vein loops over the right main bronchus to drain into the superior vena cava. So that's where it goes to. Where the zygos vein enters into the superior vena cava. I think um, it looks like there's probably a valve in most people. I think it's like 80 odd percent of people. There's a valve a few centimeters away from where the zygos vein enters the superior vena cava. So a few centimeters distal, uh, preventing you know, flow of blood going in the wrong direction, ensuring a one way flow of blood. But it's not there for everybody as I understand it, looking at the research. Where does it come from? What drains into it? Let's find out. Right, um, what have we got? Well, here's the aorta, thorax, the diaphragm's here, so thoracic aorta, then abdominal aorta, external, um, sorry, common iliac arteries, and then external. Um, why am I talking about the aorta? Just so I can compare the veins. So this is the inferior vena cava, and the inferior vena cava is going to drain into the heart and the superior vena cava is going to drain into the heart here. So the superior vena cava is running from superior into the heart. The inferior vena cava, funnily enough, is running from inferior into the heart. <clears throat> now, again, the inferior vena cava is formed by the two common iliac veins down here. Now, if I take all of this off, we can see a little bit more, but we still can't quite see enough. These are the lumbar vertebrae down here. We can see some veins here. Uh, and these are the thoracic vertebrae here. And we can see some veins running alongside. 
Um, so, <clears throat> veins running in between the ribs, draining the thoracic wall are intercostal veins. Intercostal. Costal refers to the ribs. So a vein between the ribs is an intercostal vein. Uh, and we call these guys posterior intercostal veins back here sometimes. So the posterior intercostal veins are draining into the ozygos vein, but they're not forming the ozygos vein. The ozygos vein starts down here. Now, when we run out of ribs, there is, so the, the vein that is inferior to the last rib, that is the 12th rib, we can't call it an intercostal vein anymore because it's not between the ribs. It's beneath the rib or below the rib or sub the rib. So it's a subcostal vein. So the right subcostal vein is one of the veins that forms the azygos vein, all right? Now, next, see these guys here. This, this doesn't really come out. Um, so these are lumbar vertebrae. Now what we can't see, because they're a little lateral and posterior to the stuff that we can see here, we need to dissect and take these out to see veins running parallel to the lumbar vertebrae and ascending up from the abdomen towards the thorax. These are ascending lumbar veins. There is a right ascending lumbar vein and a left ascending lumbar vein. And what we can see here are these, these horizontal veins are linking those ascending lumbar veins with the inferior vena cava, okay? So it's the right ascending lumbar vein that also contributes to the a zygos vein. So the zygos vein is formed from the right subcostal vein and the right ascending lumbar vein coming together and they form the zygos vein. And it's the zygos vein that will ascend and drain into the superior vena cava. On the other side, we see something very similar. These are called hemiozygos or the hemiozygos vein and accessory hemiozygos veins. And the hemiozygos vein is on the left side and that is formed from the left subcostal vein and the left ascending lumbar vein. The thing about veins is they are more variable than arteries, so this is more variable. This isn't the whole story. What then are these veins draining and what's their clever trick? Okay, let's dissect some more. Okay, look, so if we're in the posterior thoracic wall, if we look on the right side and we see this vein here, we see all these intercostal veins draining into it, that's the azygos vein. If we look on the left side, turning around, we see something very similar. This will look different in different people, different models, the biology is variable. Ah, so this is the, hef the hemiozygos vein, and sometimes there are separate accessory hemiozygos veins that then drain into the, the zygos vein, kind of posterior to these structures. The zygos vein then is draining very much the posterior thoracic wall, as I said, and it's in the uh, posterior mediastinum. So what do we find there? All right, we've got the esophagus. So esophageal veins will drain to a zygos and hemiozygos veins. They'll drain to the zygos vein. Um, we've got <laughs> which bits we We've got the trachea, right? So the trachea, tracheal veins, will drain to the azygos system. The heart is surrounded with pericardium. Pericardial veins will drain to the azygos system. Here's the diaphragm. Superior phrenic veins will drain to the azygos system. And one that we often forget about is um, the... Um, the pulmonary arteries and veins send blood to the lungs and take blood away from the lungs, but we also have bronchial arteries and bronchial veins, uh, and bronchial veins will drain to the azygos system. Also, because, remember, this, this shape here is being formed by the vertebral bodies, the bodies of the vertebral column, right? That's what's pushing everything out, and the azygos system is right next to it. And that means that the azygos system has multiple anastomoses, that is, links, 
to the vertebral venous plexus. Consider everything we've been looking at. We're seeing lots of veins draining to the azygos system, linking to the vertebral venous plexus. If we were to think about the potential routes of metastases of cancer cells moving from one part of the body to another, uh, which they might do in the low pressure venous system, can you see how all this is connected? Also, because it's low pressure and you change the pressure in your thorax regularly when you're lifting heavy things, defecating, um, and that sort of thing. Can you see how you could reverse, you can change the direction of flow in these vessels? Just bear that in mind when you're trying to work out how metastatic cells might pass around the body in the future. The other question would be, which I'm sure you're all asking, is, hang on, you said that those veins in the abdomen link to these veins in the thorax. How does that happen? Well, you can kind of see in here, but uh, the, the diaphragm has two legs, two crura, anchoring it posteriorly. The aorta runs between those two legs to travel between the thorax and the abdomen. And those azygos and hemiazygos veins, or the ascending lumbar veins, they take the same route. You can probably see that on, on here. Look, you can hopefully imagine these. Let's see, you can see them here. Imagine some of them there. You see where they're running. And you can also see those connections that I was talking about between the hemiazygos on the left and the azygos on the right. So if I put the aorta and inferior vena cava back on, all right, you can see where those guys run. Now the inferior vena cava has its own hole, which I've got a kind of position, but the aorta just works its way through this, this gap back here. So you can see that those other blood vessels can also through, pass through that gap between the crura, the legs of the, the diaphragm. So that's how that all links. It's all very, very posterior. All right then, what is this clever trick now we've looked at the anatomy? Well, um, I said that, I've got too many hearts, I said that the azygos system drains into the superior vena cava, up here, up here right? Um, and I also said that the azygos system is formed from the subcostal veins and the ascending lumbar veins. And those ascending lumbar veins are going to, we've seen how they're connected to the inferior vena cava, also to the common iliac veins down here. That means that there is a connection between the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. So if blood flow through the inferior vena cava was to become restricted, restricted by whatever means, blood could take an alternate route. Instead of going up the inferior vena cava, it could flow into the ascending lumbar veins, into the azygos system, into the azygos vein, and up into the superior vena cava. So the azygos system is a connection, a potential anastomosis, or an actual anastomosis, between the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. That knowledge might be important one day. Or it might, it might not, I don't know, but it's, it's anatomy, it's detail, it's function, it's, this is how we are put together. That's it, that's the azygos vein and the azygos system. Um, we've looked at how they form, how they link the abdomen and the thorax. We've looked at the structures that drain into those veins, basically anything posterior, really, really posterior is gonna drain into them. And we've seen how it drains into the superior vena cava up here. All right, it's um, some really useful anatomy. Remember, it is a little bit more variable because it's veins. So you will see some more variety, particularly on the, on the left side. But that, that is the azygos system of veins. All right, see you next week.